Hello everyone, this is uh, Chris Baer, back with the uh, Ancient Scholar, and we're going to be talking about Graham's Law, or continue talking about Graham's Law, and appreciating some of the slightly more advanced um, uh, quantitative uh, concepts. We're going to actually look at some of the mathematics and, and put some numbers to Graham's Law. Okay, before I do that, I just want to... Um, make sure that we are all on the same page. Uh, everybody, if you've watched the first video, you should be f fairly familiar with what diffusion is. Now there's another concept that sometimes we'll talk about, Graham's Law of Diffusion. Sometimes they'll say Graham's Law of Effusion. Okay? E-F-F-U-S-I-O-N. Now Effusion is just a little different from Diffusion, but it's the same basic principle that's occurring. So if you can imagine I have a box, some sort of system, and I have just a tiny, tiny, tiny little hole there, and then I have a whole bunch of gas mixed here on one side. I put a tiny little hole in here. Well, we know that that gas is going to want to go through that hole, the molecules are, and it's going to go from high concentration to low concentration, and it's going to want to establish some sort of equilibrium. It's really the same kind of thing that occurs in diffusion, but now we just have gas going through a tiny little hole, and when that happens, we call that effusion. So again, it's very similar to diffusion, um, but we just add in a couple of other conditions. I don't have any gas here, and I do have gas here, and the rate at which it effuses through that hole and, and, and um, goes into a state of a uh, homogeneous state, if you will, um, is the underlying concept behind effusion. So don't get tripped up if you see Graham's Law of Effusion. It's very similar to diffusion. It's the same process that's occurring. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the meat of Graham's Law here. So what Graham's Law says, or what Graham's Law tells us, is that the relative rate rates of diffusion <coughs> excuse me, are inversely proportional to the square root of the densities of the gases. Let me say that again. The relative rates of diffusion for the gases in question, the gases we're looking at, are inversely proportional to the square root of the densities, those gases. What does that mean? That, uh, there's no intuition. At least in my mind, there's no intuition with that statement, yet that is a literal statement of um, Graham's Law. Let's go ahead and just make a simplification and we'll simplify that and we'll translate it into every, every uh, everyday speech. What that is telling us is a dense gas, dense gas that has a lot of mass per unit volume, lots of mass, lots of density, is going to diffuse slowly. Okay? It's going gonna, it's gonna to diffuse very slow. And a less dense gas is going to diffuse faster. It's going to diffuse faster. Okay? So increased density, decreased rate of diffusion, relative rate of diffusion. Decreased density, increased relative rate of diffusion. So you can see that's where our inverse relationship is. So hopefully, this now makes sense. Maybe not mathematically, but oh, okay, so it's density. Now, don't be fooled, because as we know, if we look on the periodic table of elements, I can have certain elements that can exist in a gas gaseous state that can have a very large atomic radius. Certain elements can have a very large, they can be very large, but are they necessarily dense? Not necessarily. So again, it's not how large something is, it's how dense it is. It's, it's density, it's the mass per unit volume, or per, per, um, per, per space. Okay, so more mass, more density, the slower it diffuses. So don't think that a larger um, atom of gas is going to necessarily diffuse slower. Um, it's actually dictated by the mass, the density of that gas, okay? So don't get that confused. All right, so let's go ahead and just do a very, very basic calculation. Uh, we use the most basic 
situation that I can think of, and that situation is I want to compare hydrogen, okay, hydrogen, and it'll be in its gaseous state, so it'll be H2, and I want to compare that hydrogen with helium. We know that uh, helium um, is, uh, the electrons, it has two electrons, they live in a uh, 1s2 configuration, it's happy, um, and it has its octet rule has been met, even though it's not eight electrons, but we can only put two into that, uh, that, that 1s orbital, so it basically is a happy element. So it's just helium all by itself, just a single atom of helium, unlike hydrogen where I have two atoms, okay? So I'm going to compare hydrogen to helium and see which one diffuses faster. So for that, I'll need to look at uh, my periodic table of elements, and I'll go ahead and look at hydrogen here. And I'll notice that I see a little number here, 1.0079. Obviously, that's probably going to change with the, the new, um, the new uh, masses that are coming out but we'll use that for now. And basically what that says there is that hydrogen has an atomic mass of about one. And um, for our, our sake, you know what we'll say is that's one gram per mole. Mole, remember, is a big number from chemistry. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms, I believe. Or you could have it in molecules too. But so a mole of hydrogen, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 uh, atoms of hydrogen, is going to weigh about a gram. Um, likewise, uh, we know that an individual atom of hydrogen, only, uh, not looking at isotopes, but just looking at uh, elemental hydrogen, is going to have one proton in the nucleus. Most of the weight is in the proton. Most of the mass is in the proton. So we can say that that has about um, a, one, uh, a mass of one, atomic mass of one. So if I have a hydrogen plus a hydrogen, H2, hydrogen gas, well, that's going to be 1 plus 1, and that's going to give me a mass of 2. Okay. Now if I look over here at helium, helium now is going to have a mass of 4, right? Because it has uh, two protons in there, and there are also a couple of neutrons. We know neutrons and pro protons have approximately the same mass. So 1 atom of hydrogen is going to have an atomic mass of 4. One mole of hydrogen is going to have a mass of about 4 um, grams. Okay, So, the density, mass, however you want to look at it, is going to be 4 for helium. Alright, so let's go ahead and put that formula up now. So what I'm going to say is the <coughs> diffusion, we'll say diffusion's V, we'll call it V, of gas 1, and I'm going to say hydrogen is gas 1, helium is gas 2, okay? So the rate V1 compared to V2, the diffusion, the rate relative rate of diffusion of my second gas is going to equal the square root, okay, of the mass of gas 2 divided by the mass of gas 1, or the density, if you want to look at it as density and mass. They're, they're fairly interchangeable in this context. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and plug in some numbers. So, we were saying that um, hydrogen is going to be 1, helium is going to be 2. Okay, so 2 right up here, we know that helium has a 4, so I'm going to put a 4 here. 1 is hydrogen has a 2. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and try to simplify this a little bit. I can reduce this fraction here, right? And what I can say is that it's the square root of uh, 2 over 1. Would you guys agree? Because 2 goes into 4 how many times? 2 times. So 2 becomes 1 and 2. So I can say that there's a 2 to 1 ratio. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll take the square root of 2 over the square root of 1, all right? So what's the square root of 1? Well, that's just 1, right? That's easy. The square root of 2, well, that's a little bit of a calculation. We can do that, plug it into your calculator. It's going to come out to be about 1.4, all right? So 1.4 over 1. So let's go back up here. So 1.4 is on top. So hydrogen is 1.4, helium is 
helium is one. So what that tells me is that hydrogen diffuses 1.4 times faster than helium. And I told you that Graham's law is the more density, the slower it diffuses, the less density, the faster it diffuses. And this does make sense because hydrogen has less density than helium, so it's going to diffuse faster. All right, so that's the basic mathematics, and the basic intuition. We'll do some other videos and talk about some of the more uh, com uh, complicated calculations. Thanks, guys.